Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is how to photograph in the fog. Last week I was down on the Washington coast and it was pretty foggy in the mornings. And so here are the techniques that I use while shooting in the fog. And then I have a bonus tip at the end, so make sure you stay for that. It's a little bit uh, different and it will help you take better bird photos when birds are nervous. So the number one trick is going to be to add light. Your camera light meter is going to want to take the picture at 18% gray. So you're normally going to add light in that kind of a situation. But on a foggy day when it's very foggy outside, you need to add even more light. So here is a photo right out of the camera. I'm in Lightroom. I brought it in as a DNG. I haven't made any adjustments to it and it's pretty much 18% gray. And then here's what it looks like after I've processed it. Now this is the sun photographed through the fog. And then here's how I processed it. So I added some color. I went to Adobe Color instead of Camera Color. I warmed it up a little bit. I opened up the exposure by almost a full stop, even though I'd already done some of that in camera. And then I pulled up the shadows a bunch. And then I did a little bit of dehaze because the dehaze filter will really help you cut through the fog to some degree, but you don't want to overpower the image by using too much dehaze. That's the number one thing is to add light by overexposing the image if you shoot in manual mode or by adding one or two stops of light if you are using exposure compensation. Open up the aperture, use a longer shutter speed, or use a higher ISO value so that you can get enough light into the image so that it doesn't come out as 18% gray. And you can see even in this finished image, it's still gray and it's a light foggy gray. It's not a dark 18% gray. And then tip number two is that your autofocus might not work very well if the fog is very dense. Your autofocus is going to pick up on the moisture in the air, the atmospheric conditions, and it's just not going to work very well. When I was taking this photo of this, this juvenile Caspian tern, I was laying down on the ground and the fog was thicker there and I could not acquire focus. And this is the sharpest image I could get. And I've run this through Dehaze in Lightroom and I've run it through Topaz Denoise AI as well. It's just not going to be sharp because there's so much atmospheric conditions. I actually stood up and got another photo of this bird and it was a little bit better, but not by much because the autofocus just won't acquire the subjects very quickly in foggy conditions. It might search for the image or it might not autofocus at all. So it's just something to be aware of. If you've got a manual override on your camera, you might want to help fine tune it when you're shooting in foggy conditions. Another thing is that the closer you get to the bird in the foggy conditions, the less the fog is going to impact you. In this particular case, with this juvenile western sandpiper, I'm pretty close to it. I'm still using 600 plus millimeters of focal length, but I'm lower down to the ground. It a little bit foggy. You can kind of see that in the image. And tip number three is post-processing your image. And this is where you're going to be able to do a lot more with them. And even for this title slide here, I use the Adobe Landscape Filter preset just to add some color to it. So here we have a full moon and some snow geese in the Skagit Valley of Washington State. And this is right out of the camera. Here is the same image after I've processed it. And over here on the right, you can see that I changed the color temperature a little bit. I opened it up a little bit, just added a little bit of light. Highlights I didn't change too much because I don't want to blow out the moon. I increased the shadows. I increased the whites. I took the blacks down just to in increasing my contrast in the image. That kind of cuts through the fog some. And then down here you can see I use some dehaze and some clarity and some vibrance because all of those things help kind of cut through the fog and make it a brighter, more useful image. And then here's the final image, full moon, in the fog with snow geese. You know, it's not super tack sharp as much as I'd like, but given those atmospheric conditions, I think it worked out really well. Here's another example. I know it's not a bird, but I got this motorcycle guy coming down the beach and you see how blue the image is and how gray and dark the image is. All right, so that's straight out of the camera. Here I'm processing it in Lightroom and I went to Adobe Color and then I increase the exposure by a, about a half of a stop, 
took the highlights down a little bit because the light here and the reflections were blowing out. And then I increased the shadows and I added some dehaze. So these settings help me cut through the blue gray fog. Here's the final image. So that you can barely see this car over here. And then on the final image, you can see the car is a lot clearer. So we've kind of cut through the fog. We've gotten rid of that darkish gray blue haze. So here's a Caspian turn, camera raw right there. Here it is in Lightroom and you can see that the color has already shifted. So what I did was I added a little bit of dehaze, changed the temperature a little bit here, brought down the highlights, increased the shadows. So I brightened up the image and I cut through that dark bluish tones that we were getting. So it looks a little bit more natural, like it's not, you know, sand's supposed to be like a dark gray or brown. It's not supposed to be blue. And then here, final image after I took it through Lightroom and then Topaz Denoise AI. Just want to let you know that the Bird Photographer's Guide to Bosque del Apache will be out next week. I think probably by September 9th or 10th, it will be on Amazon for purchase. I know a lot of people are not going to go on tours to Bosque this year. People will still go there on their own. And so this offers the best 19 places to photograph from at Bosque del Apache and also the Bernardo Wildlife Area just north of Bosque del Apache. So here's the bonus tip for photographing skittish birds, whether that's in the fog or at any time. And this is really helped out when I was photographing Caspian terns at the ocean last week. If I got out of the car and I stood up by the car or stood in front of the car or behind the car, the Caspian turns would leave. But if I rolled up on them and the passenger side was on the bird side and the driver's side was further away from the bird, I could open my car door quietly. I could just get down on the ground and I photograph the birds underneath the car. So I'm laying on the ground photographing underneath the car and the birds didn't move. They didn't, this didn't frighten them. Now I tried this several different ways. I got out of the car and I stood in front of the car. I got out and kneeled by the front grill of the car or the bumper. And I stood up using the car as a photo blind. So I tried various different ways and the best way, the, the least impactful way to photograph the birds was just to roll out of the driver's side and not slam the door and then lay on the ground and shoot underneath the car. They didn't get freaked out or anything. So that worked out really well. If you want to learn more about bird photography and take better bird images, hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. And then as always, there's my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography, The Complete Guide to Field Techniques. It was written when I was shooting Canon. All of the stuff in there still applies. You might have to look up a little bit of terminology if you shoot a Nikon, Sony, or Olympus. But all of the really good, solid field techniques that I've used in the last 20 years are in this book. So pick up a copy of that. It's on Amazon. You can get it as a trade paperback or as a Kindle. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next week in the next video.